Hey guys, in this demonstration video, what I'd like to do is show you how to weld the T-joint. So what I'm going to do first is I want to go over bead placement up here on the whiteboard. Then we're going to get out there, I'm going to prep my metal, show you how to tack it together, and then we're going to actually weld all the passes. So first things first, we got to show you where to put the root pass. So we already know that right here is the root of our weld. So the first bead would be considered that root pass. Now. When you lay that first bead in there, you want to make sure that it's got a nice cover face of about 45 degree angle. The next thing you're going to do, the second pass, we're going to label this one as number one. The second pass is going to go right about here. Now I want you to notice how much space I just covered of that first pass. I usually tell my students it needs to cover that first root pass by 80 or 90 percent. It's probably closer to 90. When I actually weld this pass, I'm going to be sure to show you guys how much distance there is between the top edge of this weld and the plate. So you can see, it's there's almost nothing left there. The next pass, I'm going to weld it as if it's right going right into this corner, and it's going to cover a lot like this, okay? This one will be number three. Now this one should be at a nice 45 too. All right, so we're going to go on and we're going to do the cover pass now. The cover pass should go something like this. It's going to cover that up to the first or the third pass here. This one will be our number four. Then we're going to do a pass about right here. This one will be our number five. Oops. And then we're going to have our final pass of like right here. And this will be our number six. Um, like I said, the only one that really, really matters, I think, is this number two pass and this number four pass. Because if you get these put in the wrong position, you're going to be all kinds of screwed up. So let's go ahead and let's get set up and get going. So I'm gonna narrate this video from here on out. We just had too many problems with our uh, microphones. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do, grind up all the plates, make sure that wherever we're gonna be putting a weld is nice and clean. Uh, I think it took me about a minute 45 to do this section. So there should be no reason not to uh, grind up your plates. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay the flat, the larger flat piece on the table I'm going to get my stick ready in the electrode holder. I'm going to take my left hand, I'm going to grab the vertical up plate and lay it somewhere close to the middle as, as best I can eyeball it. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to strike off the top plate and move down to that joint and I'm going to just tack it together with a really quick tack weld. After I have the one side tacked, I'm gonna flip it around. I'm gonna make sure that this side is in the center of the plate. I'm gonna use my hand to push it down if there's any gap. And then I'm gonna repeat the same process for tack welding. And then at that point, I'm gonna look over my gap, my root gap, and I'm gonna to check to make sure that the sides are nice and square. If they're not, at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to either take a wrench or a hammer and I'm gonna beat it around, get it, get it fit up right. Once I have my metal prepped up and ready, we need to talk about welding our actual root in. Now, when I'm welding the root, I'm gonna aim directly at that root gap or the, where the joint comes together. I'm gonna to try to maintain at least a below 45 degree angle as far as up and down, so that way I'm mostly putting my weld onto that back plate. The gravity will pull it down the rest of the way, so we need to kind of work against that a little bit. One thing that I wanna point out is that when I'm welding this, I most of the time will put my rod either in the 90 degree position or in the 45 degree up position, kind of like shown. These are just suggestions. You should really do what you feel is best. All right, let's uh, start welding. I'm gonna strike up inside the joint where I'm gonna be welding over it. I want you to notice that the puddle is making contact with the top plate and the bottom plate, and I'm pointed directly at the joint. Now, also look at my me welding in the top left corner. You can see that I have my, my rod angle going into the plate is below that 45 degrees. Remember to go slow on this pass. It's gonna take about 30% more filler metal to fill up a root pass than a normal pass. Uh, don't be afraid to just go slow and restart. More than likely, you will have to tie in on a root pass. It's the only way to make them really fill in and look nice. 
Here's how my root pass turned out. Um, just try to stay consistent, nice straight um, all the way through. It's gonna pay off as you start stacking beads on top of it. You also wanna try to make sure that that cover pass or that cover of this st stringer bead is at a 45 degree angle, no undercut, things like that. All right, second pass. Now, I want you to notice that I'm aiming directly at the toe of our root pass, and I'm kind of watching the top edge and the distance between the, I guess the distance between the top edge and the top plate. I'm trying to keep that around a 30 second of an inch. Um, that way when I'm done with it, I can easily lay the third bead on there and I don't have issues getting my 45 degree angle for my cover of this section. So this is that second bead all cleaned up. Like I said, there it should look a little bit like a shelf and we're gonna lay that third bead in there. Now I said, I almost wanna cover up that root pass by 80, 90% and you can hardly see a small sliver of that root pass. So otherwise keep this bead as straight as possible and just kind of keep trying to do quality welds all the way up. Bead number three is probably one of the easiest beads to weld in because all you're doing is really letting it sit right on that shelf. Notice that my puddle is making great contact with that top plate so that it'll be a nice transition on that toe. Um, and I'm just kind of, I'm trying to do a nice full bead. I'm just kind of letting it fill in and that pretty much handles all of the transition in between bead number two and the bead number three, just by going slow. I again had to tie in. Uh, like I said, I'm trying to make a nice full bead. So sometimes you have to tie in. I probably tied in six times throughout this whole joint. So it's a good thing to get practiced at. Now my finished product has a really nice clean uh, transition between three and two, and we want to have that, but also that face needs to be at a nice 45 degree angle. Um, again, no undercut. Like I said, if you're doing nice welds all the way up, it's really going to make your life easy. Some things can be fixed or cleaned up. You know, you can clean up undercut, but it's better just to never have it, and then you don't have to deal with those kind of problems. Like I said earlier at the beginning of this video, the number two and number four passes are the most important. So now we're on to the number four pass. Now, if you get this pass too far away from the other beads, you'll end up having a cover that is too low. It'll be, it won't be at a 45 degree angle, it'll be a lot lower. So what I do is while I'm welding it, I'm trying to actually get up onto the number three bead. I'm gonna try to cover that number three bead by about 10%, let's say. And that, that way, when I lay the next two in there, they will be shoved up a little bit. So just kind of, as you're welding along, I kind of watch that top edge, make sure it's covering up that top three bead, five to 10%, somewhere in there. So you'll find where you like best. Here's how the bead turned out. Notice that there's now a nice little shelf that I can go ahead and I can put that number five bead on. And it's, it's not a super wide gap. Also, I have a nice transition between that bead four and the base plate. Otherwise, mainly that, that shelf is probably the most important thing to have uh, going into the next passes. All right, now with bead number five, I'm pretty much gonna do like I've done in previous beads where I get close to that upper uh, vertical plate. And all I'm doing is gauging the distance between the top edge of my puddle and the distance to that plate. It's Again, it's gonna be something like a 332. It's gonna be pretty small. Closer, the better. I'm not, this is really just to get your stacking correct. That way, it's at a nice 45 degree angle. Another thing I'd like you to notice is uh, throughout all these videos in the top left hand corner, when I'm welding, I'm not changing my rod angle very much or at all. Uh, you pretty much, I set it and forget it. Here's my completed weld. Again, I have a nice shelf that I can go ahead and place that uh, top bead on or that bead number six on. Um, again, just try to keep all of your faces nice and smooth, as straight as you possibly can. It's going to all pay off. Also, make sure that you are cleaning in between each one of these beads. That way we don't get any slag inclusions, porosity. It's just going to create a much nicer weld overall. All right, bead number six. This is probably the most stressful bead to weld because you've already done all this work and now it comes down to this last bead. Uh, but this one's actually pretty easy to weld. All you got to do is aim at the top of the joint at the top toe, I guess, of the some of the previous welds there, and just let it fill in. Uh, I would suggest you go a hair slow just to let it fill in nicely, um, but it'll do most of the work for you. Try to make sure that that top edge is blending nicely into the, uh, the plate. Another thing I probably should have brought up earlier was that 
At the end of your welds, you want to travel off the plate and then come back about a quarter of an inch and then wait, let the, let the bead fill in when, when you're done. This uh, will just build up those corners and will reduce the amount of underfill that you have. It's really just a nice thing to do and it makes your weld look a lot more quality. If you watch, you can see me do it right now. So this is my completed bead, nice 45 degree angle. Everything blends together really nicely. Um, this is kind of what we're shooting for. If uh, there's anything I can do to help you get to that point or you'd like me to come in and demo this, let me know. I might not be able to demo the whole uh, fillet weld because it's quite big, but I would be more than willing to come show you some stuff.